In this video, we will start doing our layer two configuration by adding all of the VLANs that will be used. Now a virtual LAN or a VLAN represents a logical network, a broadcast domain. Now this network can be isolated from other VLANs or this network can reach other networks, including the internet itself. And here's what we'll be configuring on our switches. So based on our topology, we will have several networks that will include our user, a guest, and a server network. As you guessed it, our user computers will be assigned to the user VLAN. The guest computers will be assigned to the guest VLAN, and our servers will exist in the server VLAN. Furthermore, we will have a VLAN for our upstream to the firewall, plus we will have an interconnection network between our two core switches, which is represented as the ICT for interconnection. So with that discussed, let's get started. Let's add all of the VLANs that will be used on our primary core switch and on our access switch. Okay, so on the core switch, let's make some room here and let's go into the configuration. So on the core switch, we're going to define the following VLANs. We're going to be using VLAN 10, which is for the guest network. So let's define that, comma, because I can define multiple VLANs that I want to define on our core switch. Next would be VLAN 100 for our user network, VLAN 200 for our server network, VLAN 67 right here for our internet network up to the firewalls there, so say 67. And let's also include the interconnection network right there of VLAN 980. As you can tell that our WAN links right here, these will not be VLANs. These will be configured as a layer three interface. So once you define all the VLANs that should be added, let's say enter, and we want to activate these VLANs. That is it. All right, once we're done, let's go ahead and exit out. Oops, make sure I type that in right. Let's end. And let's do show VLAN, and that will show all of the VLANs that we have added. So there's VLAN 10, 100, 200, 980, and even VLAN 67. So as you can tell, it has a default name based on the number. You may want to change that. So here's how you can do that. Let's go back to our configuration mode, and let's say VLAN 10. And for that name, we know this is for our guests. And once we do that, let's exit out here, go back to show VLAN, and now it reflects that name. So that actually looks a lot cleaner. So let's do that for our other um, VLANs there. So VLAN 100 is for our user. And I'm using the same exact name that we have here in our tables to be consistent. And perfect, and do the same thing for the server network, call this server. Perfect, and VLAN 67, which is our INET for internet. And last but not least, 980, make sure I got that one right, have the name of ICT, perfect. Let's say ICT1 because there could be multiple interconnection networks, so let's do that. Exit out, save our changes as a good practice. Do a show VLAN, oops, type that incorrectly. And perfect, so all the VLANs are added and they are active, which is important. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing on our access switch, but this one does not require all of the VLANs. So for this one, this switch will only have hosts for two different networks, our user and our guest. So we want to add VLAN 10 and VLAN 100, or VLAN 10 for guests and VLAN 100 for the user network. We will not have servers connected to the switch, so we do not need to add that VLAN. There will be no internet uplink or an interconnection VLAN that will need to exist on this switch. Only add the VLANs that are needed on the switches with the endpoints that will be connected as a best practice. Therefore, to keep it simple, we're going to do VLAN 10 for our guest network. So that name will be guest. And again, we want to make sure that we activate that VLAN. And let's add VLAN 100 for our user network and make that active as well. Perfect, let's exit out and let's confirm this in the VLAN database. And there we go. As you can tell that right now, all the ports by default are assigned to the default VLAN, just like Cisco, just like HP, like any other switch, they'll be assigned to the default VLAN of one. And as you can tell, nothing is assigned to none of these VLANs yet 
because again, our focus is to show you how to add these VLANs directly into these switches. And that looks good. So let's save our changes and save it here as well. Okay, um, furthermore, let's cover a few extra commands that you can use for viewing your VLANs. Another command is, again, we can do show VLAN, but we can specify the actual VLAN ID, like VLAN 100 for our user network. And that will tell us information only for that VLAN. So the name, the status, that doesn't change, but we can see the ports that is assigned to that VLAN. So that can be very helpful for what you're looking at. Another command that is also good, let's kind of go to our access switch here. We know that port 11 is going to be assigned for this user computer number one. So what I can do is I can say do a show interface ethernet 11 switch port. And doing that, it will tell us details for how that port is configured. Now, right now, again, it is assigned to VLAN 1. So that is reflected as the access mode VLAN and 1. And that's the name of that VLAN. Now right now it is an access port, so it's a static access, so that's the name that you will see it as. But once we assign VLAN 100 to this, then this right here will change. But that's how you can view more information on this page. Furthermore, I can also just say, instead of doing show interface Ethernet 11 switch ports, I can say simply just VLANs. And that will show all VLANs, whether they are untagged and tagged, which is critical, which is fantastic. So right now what it's telling us is that VLAN 1 is untagged to port number 11. That means that there's one VLAN that is assigned to this particular switch port. If you want multiple VLANs assigned to a switch port, then they will be tagged. And you'll see all of that once we start getting other components all set up on our switch. Okay, now before we get into assigning the VLANs to a switch port and our trunking and our access ports, that sort of thing, we want to take a step back and now we want to configure a very critical protocol on any layer two network and that is with spanning tree and we'll be doing that in the next video.